topic this morning is He Is. As I look at this passage of scripture that was read this morning, this passage of scripture was one that Jesus was sharing with his disciples because he had just shared with them that he was going away and they were distressed. And he told them not to be troubled because if they believed in God, they should also believe in him and that he was coming back for them. And I'd like to look this morning at just who he is. A lot of times we hear a lot of different words that people use about who he is, but who he is can be defined in what he does in each of your lives. We can all see that as we look at our lives, there are things that God has done, things that God is doing, and things that God will do. The word tells us in so many different places that we shall be like him, that there are things that we have not seen, that have not entered in our hearts, that he has in store for us. There's so many things that God has in store for us and so many things that he is doing. But as I look at this passage of scripture and he talks about his father's house and the things that are in his father's house. And I focused on that once before, or several times before actually. And as I think about how he had taught his disciples for three and a half years, and a lot of times they missed the message of what it is he was actually saying. And a lot of what he was teaching, they wouldn't understand until after the resurrection, when the spirit would quicken in their hearts. The one thing, the first thing I want to focus on is that he says that he is a preparer. He said that he was going to prepare a place for us. One of the things that God does through Christ Jesus is that he prepares us. He prepares us for every stage in our lives. He prepares us by the Holy Spirit to receive him as our Savior. He re prepares us for growth. And once we are saved, we, if we look back, we can see along the way there are certain things that God has done to prepare us for various stages in our lives. So he is a preparer. Just like we have certain physical instincts that when something is coming at your eyes, you, you automatically blink. Your eyes prepare. If you see something coming at you in your rearview mirror, your body automatically tenses up in your automobile. Or yeah. if you feel yourself falling, you, your instinct is to catch yourself. Yes, Those are things that the body does to prepare. But in the spirit, we also get prepared because Christ is a preparer. One of the things that he's doing for those that are saved is he is preparing us for eternity. Every day that we, we come together in fellowship, we are preparing to fellowship with one another for all eternity. When we study the word, we are preparing for spiritual growth. Because he also says, I'm coming back. And then Thomas asked another question. He says, we don't know where you were going. How can we know the way? And Jesus had to respond to him. And I think in his response, he was probably thinking back over the things that he had taught them that Thomas had probably missed 
in the teaching. And he tells him, Thomas, I am the way. I am the, the direction. I am the light beacon. I am the one who shows you which way to go. I am the one that will carry you to my father's house. Are we following his way? Are we following the light? Are we following when he turns that light on us? Are we following the light? You know, when you, when you turn on your headlights at night, one of the things that has to happen is you, the headlights are pointing in the direction that you're going. If you turn the headlights to the side, you're not seeing where you're going. And so Jesus says, I'm the one that points the direction. I'm the way. And then he says, I am the truth. He's telling Thomas, Thomas, I'm not going to lead you wrong. Thomas, I'm going to give you what the Father has given me. And he told him, the way you get there is through me. There's no other way. The scripture tells us there is no other name under the heavens whereby men might be saved other than the name of Jesus. Another thing that the scripture tells us if we look over in John chapter 35, he tells us, he says, I am the bread of life. He says, he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So on one hand, he's saying, I'm going to give you the substance of life, and then I'm going to quench your thirst. I'm going to quench that in you that is thirsting for something that the world cannot give. And further down in that passage, he not only says, I'm not just any bread, I am the living bread. I remember once hearing a story about an atheist who taught a class. And he had a terrible time understanding that certain students in the class were believers. And he put this statement on the board, God is dead. And the student said, he's alive. And the teacher said, he's dead. The student said, he's alive. And another student said, yes, he is. And the teacher went on to give all of these textbook answers as to why he felt that God was dead. And then one day later on, years later, the student was in a church and he was preaching a sermon. And he looked in the back and every time he mentioned the name Jesus, he saw some hands go up and tears come down and, 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 and clapping of hands and a hand wave and a and a head raised up and shaken. He looked up and he said, that face is awful familiar. And he walked out at the end of the sermon, it says, and I know you. And he looked and he realized it was the professor. And he says, I've got one thing to say to you. Yes, he is. You see, each of us have, has to come to a place in our life that we know he is to us. And there are several things in our life that he is to each of us. He is our healer. He is our strength. He is our savior. He is our keeper. He is our deliverer. He is our shelter in the time of storm. He is our friend when we're friendless. He is our bridge over troubled water. He is the one who sits high and looks low. He is the one who raises us up from every valley and brings down every mountain and makes every rough place plain. He is. Yes, yes. yes he is. Yes. 
to each of us. Is he to you? I extend the invitation. Is he to you? Because God is. Is there one? 